welcome to the show, where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Shireen Jaykumar. She is a medical student, and she wrote the Kevin MD article, My First End-of-Life Conversation. Shireen, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to be on the show and talk to you here today. Thanks so much for having me. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? Right, yeah. So I'm currently a third-year medical student at Florida Atlantic University. Um, I was born and raised in Florida, so I've lived here my whole life. Um, I did a seven-year BSMD program um, to get to where I am today, and I've always been really passionate about writing and reading. I have a diary that I've written in every day um, since I was like in high school, um, and I try to read a book at least once a month, so those are two really big passions of mine. And I feel like intersecting that passion with medicine has been really important to me. So I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I got to write for Kevin MD and have an article there um, that shows uh, the thoughts I had during my rotations. Tell me some of the challenges that you faced uh, studying medicine during COVID-19. Right. So last year when COVID started, um, I was at the end of M2 and I was studying for my step one exam. So during that time, um, I think my step one appointment at Prometric probably got canceled around 10 times. So every single time I had to reform my study plan and I was in dedicated for that exam for almost five months, I think it ended up being because our third year schedule um, got pushed back from rotation starting in May until August. So it was just a lot of difficulty and it kind of felt like I was isolated studying every day, but you know, we're um, at the end of it and I think uh, being a third year medical student and being in clinical rotations for the first time in a pandemic also has been a really enriching and interesting experience, which I'll kind of get into about uh, my article as well and how that affected my experience. So let's talk about that article and it's titled My First End of Life Conversation. So for those who didn't read the article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Right, yeah. So last October, I was on my internal medicine rotation. Um, and I think that rotation was really important in my um, formation as a physician, I guess, because it was the first time I really felt ownership and responsibility mm-hmm. for my patients. So, you know, I wrote their notes. I saw them each morning on my own. I presented them at rounds and I started to get an idea of like what a physician patient relationship is really like. So when I had a patient that was clearly dying on my rotation, it was a situation where I found it difficult to deal with that kind of futility and to not know what more we could do for her in that situation. Um, So the patient I had was only 54 and she had metastatic ovarian cancer and she had recurrent small bowel obstructions and extensive ascites and kept needing like serial paracentesis just for palliative care. Our team worked around COVID rules to at least have her husband in the room. So there was one morning we went in for rounds and we had to sort of face the reality of the situation with her and her husband. And that was a very difficult situation to be in. And it was hard to watch the way that her husband was just like trying to find more ways or more reasons to keep giving her treatment, um, like clinging to lab values, like the albumin or the white count. And being in that situation was hard. It was the first time I think that I cried in a patient room and my attending cried as well. And the patient cried. And it was sort of a bonding experience that I didn't have up until that point. And I mean, like we say all this medical terminology, but like at the end of the day, sometimes it means so little in terms of what we can actually do for a patient. So being brought face to face with that kind of futility was difficult, I guess, as a medical student that, you know, we write on all our med school apps. I want to save lives. I want to be there. Um, I want to help people. And then kind of being faced with the futility of sometimes there's not much more you can do um, is a really difficult situation. So... Um, I wrote in that article that I still hadn't come to terms with that futility and that I was still struggling. And a couple months after I wrote that now, I am still struggling with that. But I think um, what's really important as future physicians and as physicians physicians is that um, we write about things like that and we internalize it and we give it the importance that it deserves. And I think that helps a lot. So that kind of self-reflection. Did you have any training in terms of end of life care, end of life role playing in your preclinical years that prepared you for that moment? Right, yeah. So interestingly, um, we do have like a palliative care physician that um, 
uh, counseled us through medical school. And I remember in M2, we had a, situ a, a like a simulation for an end of life conversation um, with a standardized patient. And I still remember doing that, but like, it, it was so crazy to me in my mind how doing that is so different to actually talking to an end of life patient because it's just sort of the reality, the crushing reality of that situation and how much more emotional it can be in that moment. And I think that a lot of times we're, ta we're taught to stay like sort of less emotional and not crying or being so explicit in our emotions. But I think sometimes that is the appropriate reaction to have with a patient. Um, so that was really important to me to have that experience. And I think it's good to have, like when we had the simulation, they would give us ways to talk to patients, you know, um, phrases to use to make sure that the patient knows that this isn't their fault, that, you know, that we're working with them through this and trying to use phrases like that helped in that situation, but it still is very different actually doing it. So as you were having these difficult conversations uh, with the patient and the patient's family, what are some of the things that you did to help you through it? As I was saying, like, I have a diary that I keep in every day. And so the day that this conversation happened, like, as soon as I got out of rounds, that was the first thing I did. I just sat down and wrote about it. And I think that's something that helps me so much, just self-reflecting about what happened during the day. And, you know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes, like, you have a long day in a rotation and you get out and you don't really want to think about what happened. And um, But I think it's really important to find that, like, emotional resolve to still write about it. Like, you don't want to see a patient as just, like, a set of labs or a list of vital, vital signs. Like, you want to make sure that you see them as a full human being with their own thoughts and values and passions and that's kind of how I cope with it I feel like just writing playing music doing something to put that emotions that you feel into the sort of product I guess and tell me what the reaction was of your medical team during that rotation what kind of support did you get from like the attendings and the residents during that time right yeah so I think after that conversation we did have a little debrief outside of the patient room the attending sort of you know, I expressed to the attending that that was my first time um, having a conversation like that with a patient and their family. And uh, the attending was really empathetic and spoke to me about like what her first time was like having a conversation with like that, of, like that with a patient. And we just spoke about it for a little bit. And um, she let me know that I could always come talk to her if I wanted to look through this. And once I wrote this article, I sent it her way as well. Um, to let her know like how that experience impacted me and she gave me advice too about you know how she has never come to come to terms with this kind of futility in medicine either but just the same thing that like internalizing it and trying to get through it in your own way is what's most important. We're talking to Shireen Jacobar. She's a medical student and she wrote the Kevin MD article my first end of life conversation. Shireen obviously no amount of simulation can prepare you for a real life difficult conversation. Now, what are some of the lessons that you've learned that you could share with the other medical students who may be listening to this? I think really the most important thing is to be there in that moment, to be emotionally present, to allow yourself to feel things when you're with that patient because they're feeling things as well. And it's important to be open to that and not be closed off. Um, and that was one big thing I learned. And then, like I said, the same way, just when you're finished with that conversation, just when you're off rounds, just go home and write about it. Like mm -hmm. make, make music about it, write a poem, just do something that expresses what you're feeling so that you can deal with those emotions. Cause you don't want to keep them bottled up and have that affect you in a way later on. And I think, you know, a lot of physicians go through emotional burnout. Uh, I think one way to sort of stave that off is to keep yourself self-reflecting every day on what you're going through. Now, I'm sure that your other medical school colleagues, they also have their own difficult conversations with patients as well. What are some of the ways that you see they handle the emotional experiences of such encounters? We have like an ethics uh, session about twice a semester, I believe. And so students will give case presentations on those. And that was, I think that's a wonderful thing for our school to have because I sort of see how other students cope with that. And yeah, sometimes it's through writing, sometimes it's through speaking with their attending, sometimes it's through uh, spending more time with a patient, just, you know, going back to the patient room later in the day and just sitting with that patient and learning more about them and seeing them as a person. And I think uh, all those ways are really helpful. 
And my final question, what's your take home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? I feel like medicine is so much more than just utility. And even though we have these experiences, we still can do so much to help patients. You know, I'm only a med student. I'm like at the bottom of the totem pole at the moment in the hospital. But um, as I said before, I really believe continual self-reflection is key to retaining that empathy. Um, you know, it might be hard, but just like think about what happens with your patients every day and feel the emotions that you're supposed to feel and don't feel like you have to bottle them inside. Shereen, best of wishes at the rest of medical education. And thanks again for being on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Kevin.